In this video, we're going to start looking at integrating rational functions using the partial fraction decomposition. So the steps involved will um, include identifying the form of the partial fraction decomposition, solving for those um, undetermined co coefficients, those a, a's, b's, and c's, um, and integrating each term of the partial fraction decomposition. So in this first example, um, we have the integral of 3 over x cubed minus x squared minus 12x. And so the first thing that I notice is that this is a rational function and it is proper. So I can write down um, what the partial fraction decomposition form is um, after I factor this. So this is x times x squared minus x minus 12. And we saw this particular form earlier, but we'll just remind ourselves how this went. So this was 3 over um, x times x minus 4 times x plus 3. So we have all simple linear factors down here. So this will um, be able to be written as a over x plus b over x minus 4 plus c over x plus 3. Okay, so that was our first step here. We've identified the, the form. Okay, so now we have to do the work of actually figuring out what a, b, and c are. So to find a, b, and c, Okay, we're going to start by clearing the fractions. Let me just rewrite what I have over here. 3 times x, excuse me, 3 divided by x times x minus 4 times x plus 3. Okay, we'll start by clearing those fractions. So that means I'm going to multiply both sides here by x times x minus 4 times x plus 3. So that'll leave me 3 on the left. And when I take this denominator here and multiply it on um, my right hand side, let me just write out what we're doing here. So we're multiplying here x, x minus 4x plus 3. And also over here, multiplying by x, x minus 4x plus 3. Sorry, I have to kind of squeeze that in. So notice that when I multiply a over x times these three terms here, the x's will cancel. And I'll, I'd be left with a times x minus 4 times x plus 3. When we multiply b over x minus 4 times this quantity, the x minus 4's cancel, and we have b times x times x plus 3. And when we multiply c over x plus 3 times this quantity, the x plus 3's cancel, and we have c times x times x minus 4. Okay. So what we're going to do next here is um, expand out this right-hand side and collect um, our like terms together. So I can figure out what is the coefficient of x squared of x and what is the constant term over here when I um, collect all those, all those terms together. So we see this is 3 equal to a. When I expand out this part, I have x squared minus x minus 12. Then we have b times x squared plus 3x plus c times x squared minus 4x. Okay. So this gives me a times x squared minus ax minus 12a plus bx squared plus 3bx plus cx squared minus 4cx. Okay, so now we look at um, collecting those like terms together. So I see I have an ax squared and a bx squared as well as a cx squared. So I can say I have a plus b plus c x squared terms. Um, if I look at my terms for x, I have a negative ax and a 3bx and a minus 4cx. So I can say I have um, negative a here plus 3b minus 4cx. Okay, and then for the constant term here, I have just the negative 12a. Okay, so let's look at how this is going to help us figure out what a, b, and c are equal to. So I have this equation here. This equation is true for all x. Okay, and I can also see what I, what I have here is um, a polynomial that's just the constant 3 is equal to this polynomial with these certain coefficients of x squared x and this certain constant. So we have this fact that polynomials are equal 
if the um, coefficients of the same powers of x are equal. So the polynomials are equal if the coefficients of the same powers of x are equal. So this fact is going to allow us to create a little system of equations where we can then solve for these unknowns. Okay, so a big part of partial fraction decomposition and solving for these constants involves doing, doing some algebra. Okay, so notice that on the left-hand side here, the coefficient of x squared would be zero. I have zero x squared terms. But on the right-hand side, I have a coefficient of x squared of a plus b plus c. Okay, so we're going to write down what we're doing here. We're equating the coefficients um, of x squared, x, and the, the constant term, which we can think of as the coefficient of x to the zero. So for x squared, I can set up the equation zero equals a plus b plus c. So zero represents the coefficient of x squared on the um, left-hand side, and a plus b plus c re um, represents the coefficient of x squared on the right-hand side. For x, the coefficient of x on the left-hand side is zero. There are no x's over here. But the coefficient of x on the right is negative a plus 3b minus 4c. For the constant term, I have 3 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, it's negative 12a. So this is our system of equations. that we can use to solve for our a, b, and c. Okay. And so we can use um, a variety of different algebraic techniques to do that. Notice that um, a is the easiest one to solve for here initially. I can see that a is going to be equal to 3 over negative 12 or negative 1 fourth. Okay. Um, then I can replace a in one of these um, equations here with negative one-fourth, so I can see that zero is equal to negative one-fourth plus b plus c, or that one-fourth equals b plus c. Okay, That also allows me to then write something like c equals one-fourth minus b, okay, which I can use as a substitution in this middle equation. So I have zero equals negative a, or one-fourth, plus 3b minus 4c, where I can replace c with 1 4 minus b. And now I have an equation totally in terms of b, and I can solve for b out of that. So this is 1 4 plus 3b minus 1 plus 4b. So let's see, it looks like I have 7b um, minus 3 fourths, where 3 fourths equals 7b. So b equals um, 3 over 28. Okay. And then we can use b to solve for what c is. So c is 1 fourth minus 3 over 28. So when we get that common denominator, we see that c is 4 over 28 or 1 over 7. Okay, so we can summarize these different values. We have a is negative one-fourth, c is one-seventh, and then our b is three over twenty-eight. Okay, so that took a little bit of algebra to solve for that, but the system of equations here will always work for finding um, those unknown values. There is one other method that we have, which in the case of um, having all simple linear terms um, is a much shorter method, and in some other cases um, would just help you set up a different system of equations. So here's an alternate method for finding a, b, and c. Okay, so note that we had initially an equation set up where I had, after clearing my fractions, that 3 was equal to a times x minus 4 times x plus 3 plus bx times x plus 3 plus cx times x minus 4. So I'm just rewriting something that we had earlier um, in our work. Okay, so what's another way I can use this to figure out what a, b, and c are? Well, we said that this equation here 
is true for all x. Okay, we've said that that's an equation. It's true for every single value of x. So it must also be true, of course, for particular values of x. So the idea is I can pick some really convenient values of x to set up um, a simplified system of equations. So we're going to pick three convenient values of x to plug in. Okay. So see that if I plug in a value like 4, okay, that's going to make some of these terms um, be 0 and drastically simplify a system of equations. So we'll start with plugging in something like x equals 4 here. That gives me the equation 3 equals, well this would become 0a. If I plug in 4 here, I would have b times 4 times 4 plus 3 or 7. Plug in 4 into this last term, again that becomes 0. So I have this simplified equation here which allows me to easily solve for b as being 3 over 28. If I plug in another convenient value like um, x equals negative 3, notice that this term here becomes 0. This middle term here will also be 0. And then I would plug in negative 3 here into this last term. I'd have c times negative 3 times negative um, 3 minus 4 or negative 7. Notice that that would be 21c equals 3, giving us c equals um, 3 over 21 or 1 over 7. So this is agreeing, of course, with the values that we found before. So what's one other convenient value? We'll notice that um, I have some x's here, so plugging in x equals 0 would also make two of the terms go to 0. So I'll have 3 equals a times negative 4 times 3, with these last two terms being 0. And this gives me a equals 3 over negative 12, or negative 1 fourth. So that gives us a second way to determine our a, b, and c. So now that we have our a, b, and c, we can go ahead and actually integrate um, our rational function by integrating the partial fraction decomposition. So remember our initial question was to find the integral of 3 over x cubed minus x squared minus 12x dx. And we now know that this um, rational function here can be written as the integral of a over x, where our a is negative 1 fourth, so I have negative 1 fourth over x, plus b over x minus 4, so we found b was 3 over 28, so 3 over 28 over x minus 4, plus c over x plus 3, so this is 1 seventh over x plus 3. Okay, and so I see how this is going to dramatically simplify um, the integral process. Now I can integrate each of these terms. So I know the integral of this constant here times uh, 1 over x will be negative 1 fourth log of the absolute value of x. Then I'll have plus 3 over 28 times log of the absolute value of x minus 4 then plus 1 seventh log of the absolute value of x plus 3, and then we have plus c. So this here is our final answer.